Part two day, 365. Um, I don't know how long this is yet since the, my first part. And uh, I, I will say one thing. I think every video that I make from now on, I'm going to tag it to P365 because I think I must have picked up like 50 subscribers on that video alone. I mean, I've been doing this shit for a couple of years now and I make one video about a P365 and, and so maybe it is still a hot gun. Um, okay, as promised, this is part two and what do I think? But I've been living with it for, for a, a little while now and uh, which we, let me bring up a couple of things. Um, with, with, with my, I think up to 88 subscribers now, with, with that massive success that comes with having 88 subscribers, I've had uh, a lot of comments. I thank you all for your comments. I can't believe you're interested in what I have to say. And I had my first couple of little pushbacks from, from some people. So let me address a couple of, uh, a couple of things. Uh, one, in my first video, I mentioned um, these uh, forward uh, um, slide serrations and how they mean nothing to me because I don't do press checks. I, I don't care for press checks. I've never done them. I must have offended somebody about that. You know, there was a comment about, you know, how I'm too cool or too tactical to verify that I had to check to see if my gun's loaded. Look, I appreciate the comments, both positive and negative. I said that they don't matter to me. I was not trained with press to do press checks. None of my semi on this is my first semi-automatic with, uh, with front side serrations. They don't mean anything to me. I think that there are other ways, and I think in my comment I said, I got a little snarky back, but in my comment uh, response, I said that, you know, I think there are better ways to check to verify your gun state of load, including dropping a magazine and racking the slide, but also, you know, even without a specific window, you can see when there's brass, every, every gun, this isn't loaded, but you can see, every gun you can see into the chamber a little bit. I can always tell when there's brass in the chamber, and if I'm really that confused, I'll actually check it, not press check it. Uh, hold on, I got I, I got to take a pause, and we're back. I, in fact, I won't even edit that out. That was the wife calling me. She knows I I, I make these dumb videos, and I, I think she makes it her, her point to uh, to call when I'm when I'm in the middle of it. Any minute now, the dog's gonna start barking. I think I'm gonna give him a producer credit too. You know what I was saying? I just don't like press checks because I think there are other ways to verify the state of load. I could tell if this is loaded. Like right now, it's not loaded. There's no brass in the chamber, but I'm still not gonna put it to my head and pull the trigger. I think there are better ways to check the state of load of your gun than to put your fingers all the way up by the muzzle and partially unseat and partially eject the round to look at it and then reseat that. To me, that's just adding a step, just adding a possible point of malfunction. You 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 know you put the magazine in, you strip one off the top, and it's loaded in there. The extractor hopefully catches the rim properly, and it's in there. Leave it. Adding a step to that, adding a possible, well, unseated, reseated. Let me keep checking it because, you know, I, I want to look at it. It just it just doesn't sit well with me. Again, my training comes from the NYPD, and they're very conservative in what they do. That's not how they train this. That's not what I do. Whether that's right or wrong, I can't say. I know maybe some military. I think maybe that might have been part of military training. Look, if you're happy with it, it works for you, that's good. My point is, for me, for personal safety-wise, for possibly unseating a thing partially and then maybe getting a failure to extract properly, um, it, it just it's not something that I do. So therefore, because as I don't do it, front side serrations mean nothing to me. There are no selling point of, to this gun at all. And it's just not a thing that's very important to me. If you do it, do it, man. Knock yourselves out. The other part comment, I think, was I think maybe someone got a little confused uh, about the realities or, or lack of reality that comes with making YouTube videos. Now, I don't know how long it's been since I made that first video, and that first video was made over the course of, uh, I don't know how many days or hours, whatever it was. Um, and someone commented that I, I'm, I'm carrying a gun that I haven't fired yet, uh, you know, professionally, you know, to protect the client, blah, 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 blah. I had to explain to that person, I'll, I'll, I'll explain it to all of you, because I'm hopefully you all know this. This is not real life right now. I don't live in a white box, and, and this, is, this isn't really happening in real time. When I make this, and when I shot this, the video that, the, the footage that I'm going to put attached to this was not today, okay? And the fact that this is coming out, however many days after that part one came out, that's not how many days that actually elapsed. You understand? It's, it's, this is something I do not even part-time. It's something I do as a hobby just to hear myself talk. Um, you know, I, I lost track of the timeline. But just so you know, the footage that you're going to see me with this gun uh, later on in this video, they're not the first shots that I took. I tested this gun before I actually carried it. 
out on the street for my own personal protection. I mean, come on, man. Seriously. Okay. With that over with, hopefully with no more uh, uh, interruptions. And I don't know if you could hear the banging. The, the, I think uh, Green Yamo Studios is under uh, more construction. So uh, that maybe that'll probably... Yeah, hopefully they start like cutting tile and shit during the video. Okay. How did I like it? Um, I've been living with it. But let's, for purposes of this video, I'll just talk about the range sessions probably that you're gonna that I'm gonna be showing you and what do I think of it uh, I like it this this gun actually shoots uh, it shoots much bigger if that makes any sense it shoots much bigger than what it actually is it's very comfortable in the hand let me throw a magazine it's very comfortable in the hand it points very well uh, yeah it's, it's a short sight radius because it's a short slide now I'll get into that another thing in, 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 in a little bit about the size of this gun um, it shoots very f flat. I, I like it. Has kind of a low bore axis, and that's something I'm used to with a with a the Glock 19. How low the bore axis is, and this actually kind of spoiled me. But I don't know if you use the term spoiled. It spoiled me for a lot of other semi-automatics. When when I first started, you know, extending my collection, bore axes that are much higher, I had kind of a a, a thing like finding my sights all the way up there. I know that probably sounds stupid, but you know, you, you train with one firearm. I've had this Glock 19 for a while. This one actually is more natural to me, even more natural than the shield. The shield to me seemed a little bit high and it took me a little bit of an adjustment. The shield is a great gun, a nice shooting gun, but this one I have to say, not just because I own it, I own the shield too. Uh, I, this one just felt very natural and, and, and good in my hand and, and it shot very well even though it, it's so small. It shot very well. Um, I was accurate with it. I was certainly accurate with it at, at self-defense ranges. I'll, I'm going to have a lot of visual aids with this one too. I got some targets. I'll, maybe I'll put it on as well. I'll show you the results of things. But mostly, I mean honestly, who, who gives a shit? You know, if, if, if I sprayed and missed the paper 11 times, I'm really going to show it to you. I mean, you don't know if I shot it, but take my word for it. What I'm going to show you is to illustrate a point, okay? Um, it shoots very well. It's very comfortable in my hand. Um, you know, I shot some at 25 yards and I hit, you know, enough at 25 yards. That's probably the only time I'm ever going to shoot this gun at 25 yards. It's not what it's designed for. This is designed for up close. This is designed for, for, for personal protection. It's designed for ultra concealment. If you're shooting at 25 yards, I, I don't know. Look, when, when, when you're in uniform, when you're, when you're, you know, I have a law enforcement background and there's a reason why they have a shoot at 25 yard line for qualification because as a police officer you are not only not only do you not have an ab obligation to retreat um you actually kind of obligated to engage and sometimes that engagement can come from from from, from distance sometimes if a guy is you know running into a crowd with it with a sword or a gun you might just have to post up take aim and drop one in the back of his head okay from 25 yards or greater so they always had his fire at least a few rounds from from, from that distance as a civilian you're gonna have a little bit more difficulty explaining a 25 yard shot. I mean, at 25 yards, if, if you know, 25 yards is close enough for you to hit him, that's nice, but 25 yards is also far enough away where you can get a good fucking head start and get out of here. And as a civilian, you know, this isn't a stand your ground state. Fucking New York doesn't even want to, doesn't carry fucking guns. This is not a stand your ground state. So if you're 25 yards away, someone is gonna say, are you 25 yards away? Is this 75 feet? Fucking run. You don't have to engage him. With, with 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 your with your three point one inch barrel, what would you, would you shoot? Would you shoot him for? Things to consider. I did most of my shooting with this at ten yards, uh, seven yards, because that's what the FBI says, and close up stuff too. You know that that's how I practice. And if I'm around the range, and I got my carry gun on me, I'll put some rounds through it. You know, but again, at distances that I'm going to actually going to use this at, and at those distances, this gun was was very accurate. Um, I like just about everything about it. Now there are some things. That uh, I'm going to cover specific uh, 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 things. One of um, one, one of the things I heard, um, especially from from a uh, from a few channels, the channels that I respect and channels I subscribe to and that I like, and I'm not going to get into who said it, but a lot of them might have mentioned that uh, the magazines, because the grip is so small, getting the magazine in and and getting it out, you have to you know it, your hand can interfere with it getting it out. Or, you know, so you might have to do something like that to, to let to let it fall or change your grip on the magazine. And, and conversely, get a new one in, you kind of have to peel your fingers away. 
Well, that's that's true. You, you do have to do that. But again, it comes back to what I'm talking about. Look at the size of the gun. Okay. Now, if if you want easy, positive magazine changes and ejection without having to move your hand, well, here's your answer right here. Okay. Now, if if there was some way through comic book science I could pull this gun out of my pants fire off the first 11 because I'm in some blazing fucking shootout and I actually have to make that magazine change. If I could somehow magically transform this gun into a, this, a gun this size where I could do magazine changes, well then sign me up. Unfortunately, this is real life and this is the gun you're carrying. It's, it's this small for a reason and this is just what you have to deal with. If you're changing a magazine, get used to opening up, changing your grip and slamming that new magazine home. And I have some videos, uh, a couple. I'll show a couple of segments of magazine changes, and they're they're perfectly acceptable. But again, what is the gun used for? It, are you going to be changing magazines? Maybe, maybe not. I personally don't carry a, a second magazine. All the fact I hardly ever carry a second magazine. That was one of the selling points of this gun. It has eleven in it. Okay, so you know a magazine change in in my in my civilian life now is going to be very very rare if i need more than 11 well i guess i'm fucked right um so that 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 whole size thing the magazine wise is is kind of something that i i don't really you know um subscribe to same thing with uh they uh you, you'll see a lot of reviews now of the um the 365 xl okay by all counts, it's, it's, it's an excellent gun. Everyone loves it. But a lot of those same channels always say the same thing. Like, oh, it's it's an improvement over 365, and it's it's this, and it's the, the sight radius. I hear sight radius a lot. And the grip, it fits in. And, well, of course it does. It's a bigger gun. Guys, come back to me here. Come back to me. Look at the size of this gun. That's the point of it. Of course a longer sight radius would make it easier to shoot. Of course a longer grip would make it easier to hold. But it's not. It's not. It's meant to be stuck in. Where, where's where's my thing? Again, I said before, this is the holster that came with my. Look. I hope it's not backwards. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. This is the holster that came with my with my LCP two. This is a nine millimeter. It holds eleven rounds. It fits in the holster designed for an LCP two. This is something you stick in your pocket. If I'm in a blazing gun battle, would I like it to be this size? Sure would. But it's not. This is what it is. This is you have to make some sacrifice to go with a gun this size to carry eleven rounds in a package this small. You don't have the sight radius you want. You don't get to mount the accessories that you want. You don't have the grip that you want. But as you'll see in my shooting video, still works. It, it's 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 still good, and I'm very 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 happy with this gun. I'll also say something um, about it as, as I continue to gush. It's not going to be a total gushing video though. I, I do have some, a couple of points. As I continue, as I continue here, um, not one malfunction yet. Now, granted, I haven't put thousands of rounds through this gun. I mean, this this Glock 19 is is around 10,000 rounds, and I think, not counting the, the last couple of failures to extract that I fixed with that extractor thing, um, if you eliminate those two in 10,000 rounds, two, three malfunctions in 10,000 rounds, I, I, and I might I might be pushing that. Okay, now it, malfunctions that weren't ammunition related, like falling on a dead primer, that type of shit, because that has happened to me. Uh, just a failure to feed. <sighs> yeah, I, you know, I don't want to get off target, but now that I think about it, this fucking thing is, is magical. That's why I was so upset when, when it was starting to get failure to extract. But I digress. I'm going to do a, maybe another Glock 19 video. Um, not one malfunction in maybe I put like two, 300 rounds through, maybe 350 rounds through this. Nothing. And although you might say, well, you know, it's a $500 gun, you would expect that, and I do expect it, but I will say this, that shield that I got, that I just got rid of, in its first 200 rounds, I did have a malfunction, uh, a, 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 a double feed. I did have a malfunction. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know what? Don't take it totally for granted. You know, I mean, that that, that shield, although I got it, you know, it was 360 bucks. I think it was the, the 1.0 version. 360 to 500, you know, yes, this is more expensive, but, you know, it's a Smith & Wesson, this is a SIG, I did have a malfunction with that shield. So far, nothing. So, not, not knock on wood, maybe it'll go on that. Um, things that are not so great about it. I bitched about this the first time. I'll bitch about it now. Um, these two comes with two magazines. I just went into my whole rant about size. I don't like extended magazines 
on ultra concealed carry firearms. I wish that this was an option that I could have bought from SIG. I wish that they came with two of these. Now, that's not just me holding to my philosophy so on that, that I'm, I'm gonna stick with it. With this extended pinky in, it kind of, it didn't, again, my hands are bigger than, than, than most, but it kind of put me in a one of these type of situations. It kind of had to compress my pinky to get it over that lip, or I had to ride it underneath it like it wasn't there. So basically, you see how, how it fell? That point was right on my finger, and I was always aware of this extended magazine, and I gotta tell you, and these magazines cost like 50 bucks. Um, maybe I could just buy a, a flat plate and replace this. I will never, this sits in my, I will never carry this pinky thing. I don't like it. I didn't like the the philosophy of it going in and in using it for for a while now i literally it makes the gun not fit my hand this gun i, I told you with bigger hands i'm always used to dangling pinkies anyway and with with it it, it kind of wraps around it's the same thing i'm doing without the digging into my fingers so that's a bit of a negative for me might not be a negative for you okay maybe if your hands are much larger than mine it's a total non-issue because you're down here anyway and if your hands are just you know non-circus bear sized your pinky will fit nicely and it'll give you that that three finger grip that everyone loves okay uh, for me that dangling pinky was never a thing like, like i said i was never i never really had a full i was always kind of hitting this cutout that they had in the generation twos now generation fives I, I hated that cutout for that reason so i was always kind of always dangling a, 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 a pinky in, in, in everything that i shot uh so that is kind of a it's a minor uh, non-starter for me, but you know, I, I, I could just replace magazines. The other thing is, is kind of a deeper issue. Uh, I've, I've heard a little bit people noticing this about these SIGs, and this is a little surprising, a little disappointing. Again, the, the gun has functioned flawlessly, 100% flawlessly since since I've, I've, I've been using it. But remember I mentioned it had a little wear mark before I even fired my first round through it? Well, this is after a few hundred rounds, and that wear mark has said, now it hasn't gotten worse, and it's not gotten deeper, it's just contacting enough to take the finish off of the um off, 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 off of the barrel by the chamber here um it looks like it's not getting like i said not getting any worse that's just what it is i would have uh, and here's the dog on cue hold on hold on i it's just not it, it's and i've seen a few times with with, with, with the sigs i think that to make a gun this small there's certain issues that maybe you know the the, the fit and the machining on them it's creating wear points. It's something I'm definitely going to keep an eye on. I might actually contact Sig about it. You believe this dog? I might actually contact Sig about it um, to see if it's if they're just going to tell me no, don't worry about it. Because I'm not really worried about it. It's just odd. And I, I, you know, I'm looking in there. I'm, I'm looking inside the slide. If there's anything, any burr, or anything. It's all smooth. It's just that's where it's wearing. Um, you know, something to keep an eye on. Uh, again, the, the, gun, the gun wasn't cheap, and I, I'm a little curious as to why that is. And I, I've seen other reports of wear points, and they, they wear to a certain spot, and once they are at that spot, that's how it is, and you, your gun works flawlessly with these 365. And, and if that's what it is, then that's fine. Again, this is not this is not an heirloom gun, okay? Uh, this is not something that, you know, my, my, my uh, great-grandkids are going to be bequeathed by uh you know my my granddaughter and then she's going to say you know your great grandfather used to stuff this in his pants and walk around you know so you know cherish it no this is a, a striker fired polymer framed you know clone gun uh so you know it, it it'll it'll last my life hopefully and and you know then who knows where it's going to wind up it's not an heirloom gun this one's going to go to the grandkids and along we'll, we'll, with the great grandkids along with a few others this one it just has to be a serviceable gun and you know uh, I'll, I'll maintain it and if that's how it is then that's how it is not not a big deal um so overall that that that's my my talking review of the gun i'm happy with the purchase uh i think the the, the, the trigger is great uh the accuracy is perfect for what this gun is used for um i like everything about it i like the features uh the the, the whole the disassembly thing has worked itself uh, let's see. Yeah, the lever is, is now very easy to, uh, to to take on and off, and it does the thing. That that's I noticed that a little bit too. It kind of snaps back, so you got to lift that up, then push that push the slide stop back down. Otherwise, the shit won't go on. 
But once that, you know, it, 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 it's, it's, it's worn in. It basically is what I can tell you. It, it's worn in and uh, so far flawless with reliability. So that's the first rambling part of this video. I think now we're going to cut to a couple of shooting uh, scenes. Um, I'll, I'll preface each one. Each, oh, how do you like that? I'll, uh, I'll lead in each video scene with, with what it is. There's only going to be a couple of them because, again, do you really need to see me shoot a 365? I'm at a range where, um, you know, you got a range officer standing over your shoulder and, uh, you know, you got to sneak in your fucking iPhone to, to video yourself because they specifically don't want you to do it. So do you need to see a, a, a video of me shooting? I just want to show you the function of the gun. And basically the whole purpose of it is um, the magazine changes. I'm, I'm going to show you how you can facilitate those. And, and we'll, we'll go on from there. So uh, let's do some shooting now. Cut. And just so you don't think I'm crazy, there was actually a dog down there. This is a hey, fuck up. This is Leo T. Dog. He's the producer on this video, and I wasn't talking to myself. Okay, let's come back to the shooting. All right, this first segment's going to be. Um, I guess we'll open up with uh, uh, twenty-five yard shots. A um, little bit slower fire, and uh, you'll see the the results of it. You know, um, be, be, before I show you the results, I'll, I'll preface it. Remember, it's going to be two separate groups of 25 yards. Okay, it's not one big fucking group. I mean, I, I suck, but I don't suck that bad. Also, you'll see in a lot of these video segments, you'll see me kind of looking towards the camera as I'm, that, that's me adjusting myself in the frame. I'm shooting this uh, on an iPhone when I'm at the range, and I, I got to be all fucking clandestine about it. So I'm not just a lunatic. I'm, I'm kind of making sure I'm in frame while making sure I don't get kicked out of the range by the, by the, by the range master. And for all of the, uh, all the shooting, well, for most of the shooting you see here, um, I said the gun was reliable. I ran, I, I kind of like cleaned out my closet uh, on this session. I, I was sometimes loading magazine with different makes and manufacturers. I think I, I had 90 grain fucking extreme pen penetrators. I, 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 was, I was blown through this. Uh, some 115 grain full metal jacket. Uh, but mostly, most of the shooting that I did, and I, what I always do with my carry gun, is with the old uh, NYPD spec uh, Spear Gold Dot 124 grain, um, you know, jacket hollow points, plus P. Uh, I think it's, you know, it's, it's what I'm used to. I, I know how it shoots, I know how it feels, uh, and I think it's a fairly effective round. So uh, on to the shooting. Yeah, this will be my uh, some, some slow 25, uh, 25 yard stuff coming up. And this is what we got at 25 yards. And ha, 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 keep it to yourselves. It's two separate groups, like I said. This group of 10 shots up here was my initial offering at it. And yeah, it's a shitty group. But again, I'm, I'm 25 yards. And I think the video you saw was, yeah, probably this group. I, I was, you know, I, I, I was pretty slow fire on it, I think. Um, and then I have additional uh, groups of this. I put 20 rounds here. I tightened it up a little bit. As I, I dialed in my 25 yard performance, I will say that these were the first 25 yard shots I took with this gun because, as I explained in the first portion, 25 yards is not really going to be in my re repertoire when, when I'm carrying this gun. But still, acceptable. You know, you, you, you could put this on a person's chest, and, and I tightened it up uh, later on in my shooting session. So, you know, 20, 25 yards, uh, you know, I'll, I'll take it. This segment's going to be a, uh, I guess, 10 or 5, I forget where, I, I, over 10, between 10 and 15 yards, uh, a, a quick, you know, uh, more real-world uh, accuracy demonstration. Uh, 10 quick rounds, uh, show you how the gun functions. Now that's more like it. Now we're getting dangerous, right? Again, a little more real world. The, the gun is very accurate for real world applications. And these last two segments will be the, uh, the actual purpose of, of filming the shooting. I, I Again, I told you I was going to film shooting maybe to catch some malfunctions or weirdness. 
they're going to function flawlessly. So this, these last two will speak to what I'm talking about as far as handling magazine changes. These are done at, at real, what I think real combat distances. These are about seven yards maximum, maybe, yeah, around seven yards, maybe a little closer, six, six and a half to seven yards uh, with, with magazine changes on both. And I finished the other, I finished the last segment with, um, I finished one handed and I transition over to one handed. I think one handed shooting is very important to practice. Uh, a lot of times in the ocean situations, you're going to be one handed on this. So you might want to throw some of the practice in just my opinion. Uh, so I finished up one handed and, um, you know, check out the magazine change, see if this is acceptable to you. And here's our results. This was actually from that last string when I transitioned to one hand. And again, from seven yards, perfectly acceptable accuracy. This is what I'm looking for, you know, headshot, center mass. And I was firing fairly quickly. Now, I wasn't blown off. That wasn't a mag dump because I know that'll get you kicked out of the range too. But it was fast enough where, you know, self-defense where I'm controlling the gun. Again, very good gun. So what can we take away from all this? Uh, well, you know, I did another P365 review and I put it on the internet. You know, I don't know, I guess maybe I should, should I get a cookie for that? But seriously, uh, I'm happy with the gun. I think it's an excellent gun. I'm happy with the purchase. I'm happy with my decision to carry it. I feel that this was the right move. I, I think what it gained me over the shield in the reduced size, the slightly reduced weight, and the uh, substantially higher capacity are perfect for what I need in everyday carry, both for my, my own personal needs and for my professional needs. Excellent gun. I will continue to keep an eye on any reliability issues. So far, there have been none. I'll continue to keep an eye on this. Uh, and other than that, um, it's excellent. Um, the next, uh, oh, before I get into that, uh, you know, I will say that, you know, I, I try to be clever and I try to be uh, at least watchful in my videos and I've had positive feedback from it. But just so you know, everything I'm saying here comes comes from from my experience, okay? And my experience, you know, is mine. It comes from my, my life experience. It comes from my training, okay? My training came mostly from the police department. And everything that I'm saying here is based upon what I feel. I'm not trying to put myself out there as any type of real gun reviewer. I'm certainly not putting myself there as a tactician. I'm certainly not trying to tell you how to live your life or to carry, you know, what you should carry, what you shouldn't carry. This is just what I do. And if you get entertainment from it, great. That's what I'm doing it for. Again, other than just to hear myself talk because I have an ego. Uh, this gun, um, probably I would have to say, not that I'm, I'm, you know, I'm certainly not some special operative, but I've, I've carried my share of, of guns for personal protection, or what I used to call off-duty. Now I'm permanently off-duty. Um, and I would have to say this is the best one, as it should be. It's, it's the, the most, it's, it's, the, it's the result of, of decades of, of technological advancements. I think my first personal carry, everyday carry gun, was a, um, a J-Frame, a Smith & Wesson uh, Model 640 Centennial, you know, with the, with the, with the no-hammer thing, five-shot 38 special revolver. You know, so from that to this, that that's quite a jump. I've carried, um, uh, you know, I've carried my service pistols off duty. I've uh, owned a, a car K9, which was a very good gun. Um, the department made us uh, trade in. Uh, I carried a Glock 26, which I, I had a hate hate relationship with that gun. I didn't really like it at all. It was just too big and too blocky for what it was supposed to be. I wound up never really carrying it around. Um, the shield was an excellent gun, and you know this you know, is going to be one that I'm going to be carrying for a while. Overall, I, I give it a high recommendation, and I would suggest that if, if it suits your needs, certainly give it a look. Uh, well, as always, thank you for watching. Uh, keep an eye out for my next video project, which is going to be what I call my magnum opus. I'm finally going to do a part two on that nightstand gun thing. I'm, I'm going to... Um, and all, all that footage is in the can, so it's not going to be such a wait. I'm actually, after I'm done with this... 
Uh, I'm probably going to start on getting that video together after, before I do the editing on this one. Uh, that's going to be a, a series of, of handguns, how they work from a nightstand point of view. Basically, it's going to be a um, picking up, acquiring point of aim, and getting off six rounds. I'm going to time uh, how long it takes me to get off those six rounds in each caliber. Um, calibers ranging from 9mm to 357, 44 Magnum, 38 Special, plus P44 Special, and 45 ACP. Uh, I, I think that's I think that's all I'm going to do with it, and I'm going to time it, and I'm going to give you again my thoughts and opinions that are going to be based on my experience. Um, and I think I'm also going to throw in a um, I don't know I'm suddenly advertising for my channel I I, I don't know um, I'm going to be throwing in another video since I, I got a rain session in I went I bought like fucking three hundred dollars worth of ammunition I, I I'm going to do another video I think uh, about um, revolvers single action double action revolvers. My feelings upon a lot, a lot of people are saying now that double action revolvers should only be fired double action, uh, filing hammers down, hammer spurs down, things of that nature. I'm going to do a little quick test on that and give you my my opinions on that. Now I'll, I'll I'll throw in some NYPD stuff on that too because again some people seem to enjoy that. Um, so keep an eye out for those. Hopefully they'll be out over the next few days after this one comes out. Thanks for your views. Uh, like, dislike, that's all good. Uh, if you want to subscribe, by all means, subscribe. And um, I'm not giving anything away. But other than that, enjoy the video. Thanks for watching. See you later. Oh, before the shooting commences, that last segment just reminded me of something. I said NYPD spec, uh, Spear Gold Dot, um, 124 grain jacket at hollow points. Here's a little bit of trivia. And yes, the dog's my lap again because the, there's construction going on and, and he's, he's scared shitless. So this is how this segment of video has to go. Well, now he wants to get down. Let me get down. Um, when I say NYPD spec, before, um, we, when I first was issued this, this Glock 19, and you could skip this part if you want, this is commentary part. Um, when I was first issued, issued the 9mm in 1994, uh, we initially had uh, full metal jacket rounds. I want to say they were like Winchester White Box. They were 115 grain full metal jackets. And uh, believe it or not, New York City transitioned or, or switched, or switched to, the old, uh, to the old hollow point. After you may have heard about this, if you haven't, Google it. Um, the um, the uh, Amadou Diallo uh, shooting. Diallo, was it an Amadou Diallo? Uh, yes, Amadou Diallo shooting in the Bronx. I'll give you a, a, a quick um, history lesson in this. Um, around the late nineties or so, there was a, a the Bronx. There was a, some guy raping women up in the Bronx, and it was tearing up the city. Okay, so uh, obviously we were all looking for this guy. And uh, an anti one night, an anti crime unit rolls up on a building, sees a, a, a guy, you know, roughly fit in description. They go out to approach him, gave some verbal commands. Uh, long story short, through a, a really uh, a series of tragic events, they wound up opening up on this guy, firing forty one shots. Remember that? Remember that fucking Bruce Springsteen with his song, you know, re -revi -revi revitalized his career being a social justice warrior. He fired forty one rounds at this guy. Uh, Amadou Diallo and uh, he obviously killed him hit him like 14 times the hit ratio wasn't that great but you know they hit him 14 times and or 19 times whatever it was and, and he winds up dying you know it was a, a big case uh, the, the Bronx DA at the time decides that to to overcharge these officers because of political pandering to a constituency that may or may not exist he decides to uh, uh, indict these uh, four police officers on, on murder two charges, uh, premeditated murder. These four guys decided when they left their house this morning that they were going to, you know, pick someone at random and, and murder them because, you know, who would notice that in New York City, right? Four white cops, you know, shooting a black man to death. Who, who's going to notice that in New York City? We can get away with that easy. Murder two. Murder two. Uh, you could write books about this, and, and they have. But one of the things that came out of it was that uh, at the time, Mayor Rudolph Giuliani decided that, you know, what What might have uh, actually prevented this, maybe not preventing his death, but at least maybe preventing so many rounds being fired was the fact that the ammunition we were using were 115 grain full metal jackets. Out of a four inch barrel, those things are probably cooking along at what, 1,250 feet per second full, 1,200 feet per second full metal jackets. And what happened was, again, I'm extrapolating this from what, what, from what I've read from, 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 from the case, because obviously at the time it was a big case. Um, 
what happened was is that they roll up on this 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 West African immigrant Amadou Diallo. I'm sure there was a language barrier. He just happened to be in the lobby of this building. Uh, these four anti-crime cops get out. They issue verbal commands. He has no idea what the fuck they're saying, really. He gets the idea that they want whatever, maybe identification. He goes in his pocket, not realizing that this four guy's pointing guns at him. He goes in his pocket for his, his thing, comes out. Somebody saw something. Fires that first round. Full metal jacket round. Next guy fires. Full metal jacket round. Rips right through him. Maybe misses. He hits off that concrete and steel and, and ceramic tile vestibule, starts ricocheting back. So now we got shit coming back at us. We're firing, everyone's missing, people are hitting, bullets that are hitting going right through. He's not falling, he's still standing and getting riddled holding his wallet while ricochets are going all over the fucking place. The whole incident took maybe six seconds, seven seconds for it to happen before, you know, he, he probably even less before he fell to the ground and they stopped shooting. Now, of course, it looks like shit, okay? On um, cue the hysteria. But what someone said, and even Giuliani agreed to it, Mayor Giuliani at the time agreed to it, was that maybe him standing there getting perforated and not falling down might have added to the problem. Maybe if the first two rounds took him down, they would have, wouldn't have fired so many rounds. And maybe those first two rounds might have been non-lethal. Maybe he would have went down, threat abated, stopped shooting. So the NYPD chose that point to go to hollow points. Well, you can imagine... You can. I, I actually went to the Wayback Machine and I pulled up a, an example of an article. Uh, the use of the bullets in this city is totally insensitive at a time when the whole world is watching. Guess who said that? The Reverend Al Sharpton said that. Well, if he said it, 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 it you know, it must. He's got his finger on the pulse of the people, right? Uh, what else did it say? He's ordered cops to start using devastating hollow point bullets. This is this is the media. This is New York media. Um, outrage greeted Safer's opinion. Uh, controversial slugs. Are hollow points controversial? I, I don't know. They're, they're, they're controversial. And anyway, Al Sharpton finishes it uh, with the use of the, the bullets in this city is totally insensitive at the time. Well, you know, the use of bullets is usually insensitive. But anyway, I, I'm making light of something. But that that was the impetus for going from the NYPD finally going. And, and I found it odd at the time myself that, you know, wow, the, the whole world hates us as usual and we're going to hollow points. Uh, you know, I'll take it. But that's how decisions are sometimes made in this city. So a little bit of a peek into the Wayback Machine. Uh, for those of you who, who aren't familiar with the case, the, the, the four officers were actually uh, acquitted because, you know, spoiler alert, they didn't decide to fucking commit murder that night. They, they, were, they were looking for a rapist who was tearing up the bar of the Bronx. And that's just how it is. The rapist happened to match um, the Owl's description. Now, you know, um, male black, you know, early 20s wearing this and that. You know, it, I'm sorry. It's a common description. And that's what they were doing. And, you know, that's just the reality of police work in that, you know, you see someone lurking in a vestibule in the middle of the night. You don't know if he's waiting for a pizza delivery or if he's waiting there to rob the pizza delivery boy. That's just how it is. Uh, language barrier, cultural differences aside, it was a horrendous situation, and it, it, it you know it, 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 it resulted in, in, in this guy being killed for doing nothing, but just wrong place, wrong time. Um, I don't know if the, I mean, what do you think? Do you think the hollow points would have made that much of a difference? I know that the, the the knockdown power is kind of a myth, but maybe if he's not just standing there being perforated, maybe maybe one of the hollow points expands and, and opens up and transfers some energy, and maybe he goes down. Um, maybe there's less ricocheting uh, going on. Maybe it could have been avoided, but probably not. But my two cents on that and a little hit free history lesson for you. You're welcome.